everybody, welcome back to Tahan Zoo, my sandbox build here in Planet Zoo. So, today we are getting into building for some of the Southeast Asia Animal Pack animals. And the first up is going to be the proboscis monkey, which is going to be just fantastic. First though, I had to mess around with the big lake with the new flexi-color water and get that in and change the color and make it that wonderful tropical deep azure cyan color oh god it's just wonderful that the flexi color water and the custom billboards are going to be the real star of this pack so yeah here we go getting into the start of the proboscis monkey habitat so i did change up my original design just a little bit i had some time to look at uh, the Singapore Zoo habitat just a little bit more, and which is what I'm using to kind of draw some inspiration from. Not an exact duplicate, of course, but just wanted to use it as as some reference because you know not a lot of zoos have proboscis monkeys; they're not common. So, uh, being able to use a little reference is always great. Uh, now I'm pretty sure that what I was looking at is the old habitat. I think they have colobus monkeys in this one now. Uh, could not find any photos, though, of what's supposed to be the new habitat, unfortunately, so we'll go with what we have. Uh, I, I love how the build turned out. I think it came out really great, so it's going to be really lush, really dense, loads and loads of climbing, and then with that underwater viewing in that pool, which we're going to get built up here, and it's gonna end up looking just uh yeah just great so this video was supposed to go out tuesday night hopefully that was the original goal that didn't happen backup plan was to get it out wednesday morning for you guys that didn't happen either well unfortunately i spent the better part of tuesday and then tuesday night after work and then wednesday fixing my mods because they broke with the 1.5 update and it wasn't just my mods, it was everybody's mods. My mods, Lion Raiders mods, Leafs mods, all our mods, all broke. And yeah, so we, as a group, were not expecting that an update would break new species mods. Because there really was no reason that it should. Well, what happened is Frontier threw us a curveball and did something that affected every single animal OVL file in the entire game and made ours, our new ones, incompatible and couldn't actually figure out what it was for a couple of days. Um, however, uh, on April Fool's Day, we learned what it was. And what it was is that uh, flexicolor animal thing, that that new Davy T cheat. Yeah, you make your animals look like gummy bears, so you can also break all your mods. Yeah, we did not anticipate that at all. So moving forward, the question is to will mods break on update? Well, it kind of depends on what Frontier does in their update. I'm going to go with, yeah, they probably will. That, that's just what happens with modding. Um, the game gets updated, and then the mods have to get updated. That's modding any game, basically. Skyrim was like that. You had to update your mods for, you know, the Dawn Guard and the Dragon Board DLCs when those came out. So just be aware that mods will have to be updated on each uh, update release. It's just going to happen. It's just part of modding. Now, I will say we're all amateurs here doing this. Um, none of us are professionals in the game industry. At least I don't think so. Um, some of us have more experience than others. Some of us are good coders. Some are better in Blender than others. We're all doing this for fun. So with... With mods, you know, just be aware. Yeah, they can break your game. They, they really can. I, I know some people are adamant that no, they will not. They can. And I, I have one save now that I cannot use ever again. So I don't think I can. Fortunately, I didn't have a lot in it. It wasn't a very big project. I was kind of just using it to test some of the earlier mods, but... It's broken. It's very, very broken now, and cannot get into it. I, I can get into it for about 30 seconds, and it crashes. And I'm not sure what did it. I know I've removed all the mods that I had in there. So I don't know why that one is permanently broken, but that one is permanently broken. So that can happen. Um, you know, I'll be honest, that 
that is a thing. And that's just modding. That's modding any game. They can break stuff. So I would recommend just don't... Not just don't use mods, but if you're worried about that, but keep a good backup. If you have a big project that's your baby and you've been working on it and you would be heartbroken if something happened to that and you don't want that to happen, well, back it up. Back it up in multiple places. You know, Keep at least two saves. And now with modding, if you want to use mods in that kind of uh, big project like that, have an unmodded backup at hand. Don't just start throwing modded animals in willy-nilly. You know, a lot of mods... Um, you know, we're still in the very early days of modding this game, coming to understand it, understanding the Cobra engine, how it works, why it works the way it does, why things have to be done in a certain order or everything breaks. So, you know, this is a journey, and those of you who choose to install our mods and use them are coming on that journey with us. So, yeah, back up your, back up your saves, definitely. And uh, just be aware that, hey, stuff, stuff can go wrong. Is a lot of us are first-time modders. Some of us have modding experience from Skyrim or other games. Some people, uh, the folks who were, who have been modding JWE for a little bit now, have a bit of advantage because they under they've been working with the Cobra engine more frequently. But you know, a lot of people, a lot of the mods you see on Nexus, those are the first-time mods for a lot of people, and you know, stuff goes wrong. So yeah, that's that's my spiel on that. So back to what we're actually doing here in the video. We're building out the Proboscis monkey habitat. We've got them in now. Oh, they're looking so good. They immediately go straight for the water to go swimming. I love it. Uh, this is quite a big habitat. I always end up doing this. I always end up building out these really kind of huge habitats. I don't... I know I've said this before. I don't see scale very well for some reason. Especially in this game because the scale is slightly off. Like the animals are a little bit too small and the people are a little bit too big and it's kind of weird like that but it's all right it's I always go for a slightly bigger habitat anyways because I like to cram it full of rocks and trees and plants and when you cram a habitat full of rocks and trees and plants you disrupt the walkable space which uh, you know makes it smaller for the animals so hey it works out well so I wanted to get this underwater viewing area put in. I want it to be a little enclosed building, just kind of off the beaten path. Uh, I'm going to really kind of almost hide the entrance a little bit in all the foliage and everything. But I wanted to go with just a really simple kind of plaster wall and then uh, thatch roof, the palm thatch roofing on it, uh, just to kind of fit that jungle theme, but not to be too obtrusive or anything like that. And be just a nice little spot where you can kind of come in, see the monkey swim, learn a little bit about them, because we will have the education in here. We'll be doing some custom billboards eventually for Tahan, but not probably not right away. I need to um, take some time, look at the Singapore Zoo signage and whatnot, see if I can just outright steal any of it uh, <laughs> to uh, fit into this game or into uh, into this zoo and see what we can go from there but that requires me to actually uh, find some time actually make myself take a little bit of extra time where I'm not modding the game and actually play the game I have made a couple of education boards or custom billboards already um, they're gonna go in Wild Mountain Lodge though so for that one if you've watched that series you know I was at one point doing some fairly intricate custom signage for the bison and the pronghorn and whatnot. And I kind of stopped doing that for the other animals because it's just excruciating. I'm uh, <laughs> really dealing with those little tiny pieces. I don't know how people, like, who, who build, like, those massive, like... Who is it who's doing um, Missoula Zoo? Is, is it is it Haribo who's doing that one? The incredible amount of tiny detail, and oh, and just Goron, who's doing his uh, Beeksbergen recreation and doing all the custom signage by hand. Absolutely, I don't have the patience for that. I, my brain starts to hurt. So, yeah, there's that. So the custom billboards will fix that. I'm going to do a video here at some point. That's where I'll do it eventually. Uh, <laughs> where I go through Wild Mountain Lodge and do redo all the custom signage that I did with billboards um, and just get rid of all of it. And I know when I was doing that, I was 
hoping, hoping, hoping that this was just going to be a temporary thing and I'd be able, we'd get custom billboards in the game and I'd be able to replace them at some point. So I'm not upset at all that, oh, I have to go back through and change everything out. No, I'm so glad I get to change everything out. Got some really good stuff too. It's uh, made a couple of them already and they look pretty good. So those are going to be super fun. I'm going to try to do some of that for Tahan as well. But like I said, i got to pull myself away from the modding to uh, actually do that. <laughs> it's kind of hard because i got a whole list of species to mess with. And I haven't even hardly touched the new animals. I've been playing with the dole a little bit, which has been fun. Um, uh, that, that, yeah, that's, I mean, you know, the Venturon got a lot of hate for being kind of like... Not up to snuff, but I think the dole kind of slipped past this a little bit. Like, it looked good in the screenshot, but that thing is cursed, man. I don't know what's up with the uh, <laughs> the, the in-game dole model. Like, they're, they're not super popular, and there's a reason for that. They're, they're not... They're not great. So, I, I don't know. I think I may put out a remaster of the dole. I'm trying to... Uh, I've got a new texture for it already, so when I put mine in here into Han, you'll see mine look a tad bit different, because I put a new texture on them. It's more of the classic white and red that you see instead of the uh, just all orange that we currently have. And I'm trying to make them fluffier, but uh, the, the hair shader so far has not been wanting to cooperate, but I think I figured it out. Um, my Sumatran tigers don't, uh, don't have kiss hair you know, uh, 80s hairband hair anymore. They, they have actual, uh, looks like fur that actually belongs now. Uh, so I'm trying to make Sumatran tiger as well and take another crack at the dole here. See if I can get that done. Uh, messing with the head a little bit on them too because they're, they're just, um, like the head is too small. They're too skinny. Like Frontier has a fat animal syndrome issue except with the dole. Like the thing is, it's, it's too, it's too narrow. <laughs> like you went to the other extreme. We need to meet in the middle a little bit. And like the head just is it's like too small for the body and stuff, so I'm messing around with the model and doing all that. And getting it to look pretty good. I it already looks a lot better than it did, so I'm pretty happy with it, uh, where it's coming. I'll hopefully get that one done soon. Uh I'll be able to show them off in here actually, which will be neat when we get to the dole habitat. Because we'll be doing we'll be doing all eight of the Southeast Asia animals in this one and then a few of the other uh, a few of the other base game and DLC animals that, that fit in this area of the world. So they're going to look really nice in here. Um, getting the Proboscis monkey habitat, their climbing enrichment built out. Uh, they need a ton of climbing. Yeah, I was really surprised with how much climbing requirements these monkeys need. Like, it's a ton. So I'm getting that in. They have uh, some just log climbing and then wanted to put in some natural climbing as well with the uh, the trees that they have available and then these broken cherry tree pieces and the broken ipe tree and even though they don't fit in their biome requirements yeah, I, I don't really care um, I'm playing in sandbox well for turned off they don't like the plants uh, tough I like the plants and that's what matters I think the plant requirements are dumb at some point at certain points, especially for stuff like the flamingos, like, nah, yeah, they, they can deal with having too much plants. So I want to put in a big rock wall here at the back of the habitat, so I'm going to kind of cover up that ugly fence and hide the, um, hide the management building as well, because it's just kind of an ugly plaster building, it doesn't look fancy or anything, and that's what you'd see a lot in, in zoos like this, is you see facades, there's, there's going to be a fancy guest facing themed out looking structure that the guest sees and then there's going to be the backstage which is going to be fairly utilitarian industrial kind of you know zoos have a limited amount of money even the really big ones so they're going to focus the money that they get like if they get a big grant donation or a big you know donation from some corporation or big uh, philanthropists or whatnot to build out a new habitat or remodel a new area or whatnot they're going to focus all of that going to focus most of that money toward the guest facing parts of the habitat and the whole exhibit complex of whatever they're putting in it's it's they're not going to spend a ton of resources decorating out something that guests are never going to see. 
So that's what I kind of wanted to do here, this rock wall facade, um, combining the East Asia dry stone wall set, which, God, I wish we'd gotten a recolorable version of that. I was so hoping we'd get that. <laughs> it would have just been wonderful. But uh, combining that with the uh, fake rock, the uh, rubble or gravel pieces uh, that we got with the aquatic pack, uh, just changing up the color on those a little bit. Uh, stuffing them in there, kind of meshing them into the rock wall a little bit. I really like the effect that it gives. I think it turns out really nice as this kind of like semi-ruined little bit of a look to it. Thought that they needed a little bit more climbing, so I went ahead and added in some of our fake trees. We need more of these fake trees. And then when I was doing that, I decided that I was going to replace the logs on there with the actual fake trees to kind of uh, give a little bit of continuity to the uh, viewing deck as well. So did that, gave it a little bit of a kind of cheesy, kind of rainforest cafe feeling type to it, which is good. You know, uh, hey, z zoos have a little bit of cheese to them, especially in these heavily themed sections. Like, I mean, it, it might look real good, but sometimes it it, it it's cheesy. So we'll we'll go with that a little bit. And then I wanted to put in the strangler figs because you know the banyan trees are so classic to this part of Southeast Asia, so they fit the theme really well. Not hugely realistic though to have mature trees in a climbing primate habitat like this. Uh, normally a habitat in a real zoo, this would be netted in completely. The whole thing would be like, an, uh, they call it like an aviary style habitat. And the netting keeps the animals from, well, climbing out. It's an arboreal animal, they can climb. Uh, you see the same thing with big cats, uh, the leopards, the clouded leopards, uh, the snow leopard exhibits. They're almost always netted over because those animals climb. And because it's netted over, you're probably not going to have mature trees in there because you just couldn't, the zoo couldn't afford to net in a full, you know, 200 foot tall tree. And besides that, the branches could damage the netting and then the animal escapes and you, you have problems with that. And we'd, we never want the animal to escape. So just imagine in your mind as you're looking at this, that this would be netted over, but I figured, why not? We'll just, we'll put the big strangler fig trees in there anyways. And then I wanted to drape up the uh, little viewing deck and the uh, fence going along here in these liana vines. And I really like the effect that it gives, kind of makes it overgrown, uh, feeling like maybe that fence has been there for a long time. Maybe part of an older exhibit that has been renovated into this new one. I'm getting the, all this planted up. Looking really lush, really dense. Like I said, I wanted a ton, ton of planting in here. Um, I'm pretty sure the proboscis monkeys like full coverage in their plants. I, I hope they do. I didn't actually check um, before I started building this. I figured it's sandbox. I don't really, it, it you know, it's not going to affect their welfare because I have it turned off. So I'll just go do what I want in this. Uh, getting their enrichment in. Uh, and all that. wanted to put a sprinkler in and kind of embed it in the rocks so it doesn't look quite so artificial. Uh, a few different things to get them to kind of explore their habitat and go around it all the way. And then like I said, like I wanted some enrichment right up the front, right by the viewing deck to kind of encourage them up to that point as well. And then wanted to get the backstage done in as well with a, uh, you know, dip the floor in concrete like you would see um, the backstage uh, for a primate house would usually have their night dens, which would be like their uh, the small holding cages where they uh, spend the night, and, and their off-show area, uh, maybe even a day room, but um, this habitat's not really set up to have a day room, so I did, decided not to include that. And then wanted to finish kind of theming up this little uh, underwater viewing area got the education board in and then realized that something that I had done with a completely different mod uh, broke the education boards completely. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so uh, th there is apparently a way to now get education boards to work for our custom animals. I kind of almost have it worked out, but not quite. I, I just managed to break them all. Um, 
break them all at once. So uh, yeah, I kind of rolled rolled back that change. Uh, I'll mess with it later and figure it out, or just we'll just uh, go with our our custom billboards. <laughs> just do it that way, because we can do an approximation of the uh, the in-game habitat education board. Uh, yeah, just fine. And I think we can even with the the actual education boards, we can still point them to whatever animal to indicate their to to actually be effective in education and then use a custom billboard, which will be great. So this area here at the front, I wanted to be planted up really thick with a lot of bamboo and whatnot. I wanted the entrances to the underwater viewing and to the upper deck area to be really kind of kind of hidden, like little surprises as you walk past. You go, oh, where does this go? And you come in and see the monkey pool, and then on the other one, you find your find the upper viewing deck, and it goes up and around and, and twists around till you get to that uh, the little viewing shelter up top. Wanted to have some rock work in here. Again, love the fake rocks. I mean, they're, they're just one of the best additions we've ever had to Planet Zoo at this point. So getting all that done in, it's starting to look really good at this point. It's starting to come together really well. Starting to, uh, yeah, really enjoy, really enjoying building again. I've, I've been modding so much that it's <laughs> it's refreshing to just get in and kind of build and build habitats and build out scenery again. So I wanted to do kind of like a raised up bed in here, a uh, planter bed that's kind of uh, well grown in, grown up, but I want it to be elevated up off the path to kind of break up the view, uh, the line of viewing in here. And then I wanted the stone wall to look like it had been here for quite a long time. These are uh, found in the East Asia set, these stone uh, block pieces. They're, uh, they're not flexicolor or anything, but they have a really nice kind of weathered stone texture to them. Uh, they're a piece I use quite a bit, so... Just getting them put in, just edging out the path a, a little bit. Not per It doesn't have to be perfectly edged out, just uh, well enough that it kind of fits with it. Leaving a couple of blank spaces there. I uh, can fill those in with other planting a little bit later. And so this whole big, it's really just a big planter box edged out in stone. And it's going to be very overgrown. I want to go for the feeling that these are very old zoo botanical garden grounds. They've been here for a very long time. All the landscaping, the vegetation in most of it is very grown up, very lush, very dense. The custard apple trees, which I was putting in right there, are just perfect, like, fill in the underbrush type of plants. That and the fountain bamboo, it's just they're my favorites, pretty much. And then these lipstick palms, too. I think I've said that before. I love the lipstick palms. They're such a neat tree. That little splash of red is really nice. And then lastly, I wanted to work on the plaza here. Now, someone on the workshop, and I do apologize, I didn't look up who made these. Um, apparently, these big kind of world tree sculptures are uh, something you'll find in Singapore. They're very... Uh, these artistic, yeah, giant tree sculptures, basically. So I wanted to include those, since I'm kind of basing this loosely off the Singapore Zoo. Uh, yeah, so I got those in. Uh, I will look up who did that and, and put their link to the workshop item down in the description below. I always love to give credit. It's absolutely gorgeous. Fits in with the zoo so well. Um, was mildly disappointed, though, that it didn't have any lights on it. So I went in and added a ton of lights and just lit the ever-loving crap out of it with some big stadium lights. So, yeah, it, it starts to look really good. I mean, it lights up like a Christmas tree, and I love that. Um, yeah, I don't do enough with lighting, and I'm really starting to enjoy the lighting aspect of this game. And it gives a really neat kind of view at night. So I've got about another minute left here in the speed build before we go into the ending cinematic and take a look at the proboscis monkeys. So if you have enjoyed this episode, please leave it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. 
If you'd like to see more from me, please hit that subscribe button. Do appreciate it. And uh, hit the bell notification if you'd like to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I will see you in the next one.